Let's face it, we all write bad code sometimes. Beginners are expected to, but even experienced programmers fall into bad habits. In this video, I will highlight a few common non-Pythonic, technically called non-idiomatic patterns and show you ways to write cleaner, more natural Python. Here's my first example. Let's say I have a list of continents in no particular order and want to display them one at a time. This works, but this code introduces several non-idiomatic patterns, starting with including type information in the variable name. While descriptive names improve readability, adding types directly into the name works against Python style. Python is dynamically typed and continent list could easily change. If this later becomes a tuple or a generator, the name becomes confusing and would require refactoring. A better name would simply be continents. It's generic yet descriptive, indicating both the content and its plurality. If this were a larger project, you should really use type hinting. This locks in continents as a list of strings, making your development tools more helpful without affecting runtime behavior. For example, in VS Code, with type checking enabled, I will get a warning now if I try to assign a different type. Type hinting will help you write code with fewer hard to find bugs. Speaking of variables, using single letter variables such as lowercase i is non idiomatic in Python. A variable such as index would be more appropriate, being more descriptive. The second non idiomatic pattern is how the loop is written. This loop manually indexes into an iterable, which is unnecessary in Python. You can iterate directly over the list without using range or len. The result is simpler, more readable, and fully idiomatic. Truth be told, in this case, where we do a straight print, a loop isn't even needed. You can achieve the same result more Pythonically using the join function. Now let's say you want to number the continents while printing them. For that, a loop is needed. Since we know using range and len is best avoided, we will keep track of the index manually. Unfortunately, this is still non-idiomatic as manually tracking the index is unnecessary when iterating over an iterable. There's also a small issue with the output formatting. When you use commas in print, the arguments are separated by spaces, which doesn't work here since the colon should be directly after the index. Let's tackle the output formatting first. You might think of fixing this with the plus operator, but that won't work. Python does not use plus to concatenate mixed types like integers and strings. You could use the built-in str function to convert the index to a string, which would work, but that's just sidestepping the fact that you should be using an f-string here. F-strings, or formatted strings, are the idiomatic way to combine literals and variables. They are efficient, and type conversions are handled automatically. Now, while we address the formatting issue with print, we still need to deal with the manual indexing when we want to track the index. To fix this, we can use the enumerate function, which will automatically track the index for us, simplifying the code and making it fully idiomatic. Let's take this example a step further. Now we want to store and display the total population for each continent. We can add a populations list for this. Here's a simple loop to display this information. This works, but there are a few opportunities for improvement. First, 
the relationship between continents and populations is unclear. While Zip ties the two lists together temporarily, a better approach would be to tie the data points directly and permanently, for example, using a dictionary. Now each continent is directly tied to its population, making the data more intuitive and maintainable. Speaking of clarity, large numbers like these can be hard to read. Using underscore notation to separate thousands improves readability. The original continents list can be kept if desired, but there is no longer a need for it. The continent names are easily accessible through the dictionary's keys method. Now that the data points are tied together, we no longer need the manual zip and iterate directly over the dictionary instead. The dictionary items method gives us the same result as zip with a separate list, but in a more concise form. The final issue that needs addressing here is output formatting. For better readability, output like this is best displayed in columns with text left aligned and numbers right aligned, like in a spreadsheet. F-strings make this easy by allowing you to specify the field width for each variable. North America is the longest continent name at 13 characters, so I'll set the continent column width to 13. A billion has 10 digits plus three four commas, so the population column will also be 13 characters wide. Adding the comma in the format specification handles the thousand separator. Here's the final result, much easier to read. Now, Let's say we want to provide some statistical information about the world population, calculate the total and average population, and also determine which continents have the highest and lowest populations. A non-idiomatic approach would involve using a manual loop. At this point, you might notice a pattern. In Python, non-idiomatic code is often linked to unnecessary looping. Let's go through it anyway. In an iterative approach, we could cycle through all records in the data structure. Calculating the total population would involve maintaining a running sum. Finding the continents with the lowest and highest populations would require comparing each record as we go, updating stored values whenever a new minimum or maximum is found. A simple variable initialization strategy is to initialize the total variable to zero, Initialize the continent name variables to empty strings. Initialize the lowest population to infinity, expecting that any real population will correctly replace it during the loop. And finally, initialize the highest population to zero. Calculating the average population is simply a matter of dividing the total population by the number of continent records. I'll use the len function to determine that number. For now, I'll print each result using separate print statements. A quick test shows that the output appears correct. However, once again, there are improvements needed to make this code fully idiomatic, starting with addressing the manual processing loop. In Python, you should use built-in functions whenever possible, avoiding boilerplate code like this loop. For example, you can calculate the total population with the sum function, operating directly on the values stored in the data dictionary. Finding the continents with the lowest and highest populations can be done using the min and max functions. Unlike with sum, here we need both the continent name and the population value. Both min and max can return full records, but we must specify that the comparison should be based on the population, the second element in each pair indicated by numerical index one. We do this by providing an inline function that extracts the population value for comparison. The old non-idiomatic code can be now deleted. A quick test run will help confirm that the new Shorter code produces the same results. 
The final step in making the code more idiomatic is improving the output. This can be achieved by enhancing the formatting and using a user-defined function instead of simple print statements. While this may seem like more work, properly formatting output is essential, and consolidating output handling into a single function will make the code easier to maintain. The output consists of three distinct columns, a description, the numerical population, and optionally, the continent name in parentheses. Here's a generic print statement that will handle this task. Let's refactor the previous code to reflect a new routine. A quick test run confirms this is pretty close to what's expected. I want to place the continent name in parentheses like before, but avoid showing empty parentheses if continent is not supplied. A ternary statement will check whether the continent name is provided, and if so, add the parentheses. The last issue is formatting. We need to align the columns properly. The longest description here is 32 characters, so we will set the width accordingly. Comma separated population figures in billions need at least 13 characters. Here's the final result. I'm happy with it. The next topics I would like to cover in this video are deep nesting, multiple returns, and runtime error handling. Have a look at this example function. Feel free to pause the video and try to figure out what this function does. This function returns the sum of all elements in a given list, but it includes several guard clauses for validating the input and reporting errors. Unfortunately, the code is overly nested and hard to maintain. As a rule of thumb, avoid more than three levels of indentation. This function has five. Flatter code is easier to read and work with. Also, it's best to separate validation logic from core functionality by placing it at the beginning. This improves clarity and structure. Let's restructure this function to flatten the logic. The updated code is shorter, cleaner, and much easier to follow. Two nesting levels are always better than five. If you believe that a function should have only one return statement, rest assured multiple returns when used thoughtfully are standard and accepted practice in Python. In this case, there's a clear separation of concern, making the structure both clean and readable. However, there is an issue worth noting. This function returns inconsistent data types, an integer under normal conditions, and a string when an error occurs. This inconsistency can lead to bugs or confusion downstream, especially in larger code bases. A much better approach is to raise exceptions when encountering invalid input. This way, the function always returns a consistent type, and error handling is delegated to the caller. Replacing the error return statements with raise value error would make the code much better. Now that the function has been cleaned up, it is also recommended to add type hinting, at least for the return. This will help document expected usage and works well with linters and other editor tools. The final topic in this video is magic numbers. Magic numbers are numerical values without clear meaning. This function is full of hard-coded values with unclear meaning. Some are repeated, making maintenance error-prone, and increasing the chance of inconsistencies. A common but weak solution to increase readability is adding comments. A better approach is to replace these numbers with named constants, making the code self-explanatory.
Python does not enforce constants, but by convention, we use all caps to signal that a value shouldn't change. First, I'll replace the income brackets with constants, low, medium, and high. Next, I'll define constants for the tax amounts tied to each income bracket. Finally, I will name the tax rates to make the logic clear at a glance. The resulting code is longer, but much more readable and maintainable. Any change can now be made in one place, with much less risk of inconsistencies and hard to find bugs. Of course, adding type hinting and visually formatting the numbers would be the cherry on top. That's it for this video. I hope that you found it informative. Do you have any questions? Feel free to post them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer. Thanks for watching.